Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Elson for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from around the country. According to Jesuit Father Gregory Waldrop, people are less inclined to decorate their homes with crucifixes today, but he says the graphic depiction of Jesus as the suffering man of sorrows still resonates artistically and religiously. Father Waldrop, who is the assistant professor of art history at Fordham University in New York, moderated a recent panel discussion on the Man of Sorrows as part of a symposium organized by the Fordham Center on Religion and Culture. The symposium was in conjunction with a new exhibit at New York's Museum of Biblical Art called Passion in Venice, Curavelli to Tentoretto and Veronese. He said that the Man of Sorrows, which is a haunting image of Jesus dead but not yet resurrected, continues to attract and provoke. It also relates to current conditions of anguish, loss, and deprivation in the world. He said it still shows up in contemporary songs, popular images, and even as a theme in artworks by high-profile secular contemporary artists. The exhibit runs through June 12th at the museum in Manhattan. In news now from around the world, despite the post-tsunami chaos, parishioners of a Japanese Catholic church are delivering food aid to victims of the catastrophic quake and tsunami. Because of distribution difficulties, people have been forced to stand in line for three hours to buy bread, according to one of the parishioners of Kita Sandai Catholic Church. This inspired parishioners to reach out not only to the homeless, but also to the elderly and to nursing mothers. Violent aftershocks and the continued disruption of gas supplies forced parishioners to cook meals with propane. Food was supplied by a variety of organizations, including Caritas Japan. Dominican Father Raymond Latour is the pastor of Kita Sandai and Haramachi Church in Minamasoma. He said those who remained in Minamasoma were forced to stay indoors because of how close they are to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. He said they are living on ramen noodles. The Sendai Diocese has 53 churches and eight mission stations. The Furukawa Church in Miyagi Prefecture and the Sukagawa Numato Churches in Fukushima Prefecture have been so badly damaged they are unusable. Otherwise, damage to diocesan buildings was described as minimal. And finally in the news, women in South Dakota will be required to wait three days before receiving an abortion. Governor Dennis Dugard signed a law March 22nd establishing the extended waiting period for all abortions. Other state laws require 24-hour waiting periods. Under the law, effective July 1st, women will also be required to undergo pre-abortion counseling to make certain that their decisions to have an abortion was voluntary, uncoerced, and informed. Opponents of the new law immediately announced plans to challenge it. Governor Dugard said he hoped that women who are considering an abortion will also use this three-day period to make good choices. The Diocese of Sioux Falls pledged its support of the law before the final vote was cast and the governor had signed it into law. In North Dakota, members of the state's Catholic Conference testified in favor of legislation that would strengthen and clarify their own state's laws on abortion. The conference noted that the most significant update in the legislation concerned the use of abortion-inducing drugs, requiring that a physician prescribe or provide the drug and be present when it is administered. And in New Hampshire, House members recently passed a bill requiring abortion providers to notify a parent or guardian 48 hours before performing an abortion on anyone younger than 18. Young women could avoid going uh, to a parent by asking a judge to determine her maturity and capability to make such a decision. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.